Hi guys, welcome to Gavi Gaming TV and another Elder Scrolls Online video. This one is going to be focusing on the PvP aspect. Um, you see, in a minute, I'm changing over my skills to more suit PvP with the stuff that I've got at the minute. Um, I don't have my dual wield up yet because I don't have enough uh, one-handed weapons to do it. I'm going to dagger it in a minute. The sword's level 17. I might get doing this. So this is the starting area. See, looks awesome as always. No bother what that guy's doing. I think he's tripping. <coughs> if we go to the map in a minute, we just see the starting area. So we don't, there's the entire map. We're actually getting pushed back quite a lot here. So, there is your dagger fall, guys. There's your Aldemir, and oh, there's us. They got old Ebonheart packed. Now, we actually owned a lot of these around here before, but the PvP's kicking off. They just had a patch, I think, uh, this afternoon, so everybody's rolling back in again. Massive fighting at this middle post here, so I might go there for a laugh. And see what's going on. Now, you, we do have way shrines here, that's how you get out of PvP, so you've got to come back to one of these main two maps to get out of PvP. But each place has its own shrine to port to. So, if I go to this one, you see now anything that's connected, you can port to. Obviously, the ones that aren't connected, you can't do. Simple as. So the fighting must not have actually got to there yet, so we'll port to that. If the place is under siege, it's a bit like Guild Wars, where you can't teleport or resident it if it's under siege. If the fighting's outside the gaff, then you're alright, you can go straight to it. Ah, another funky loading screen. I have seen fights that are pretty much that good as well. During the beta, there was... 30 or 40 freaking tributaries and stuff outside and a little on top of things. People rushing in was great. Um, lag wise, I haven't really had much. Um, I've had the odd bit, but I think that's when the servers were starting to go down. Um, sounds like they're kicking the shit out of this place. So. They may have changed the way you can port to these places. Closer. See, there's a fair few out there. We're trying to hit them by the need. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, oh. Didn't want to drop down like that. <laughs> ah, get in. Doors actually deforming, which is pretty cool. Now this is about tactics. Not so much on this point, but as you see here, you've got points around it that you take. So the farm is, I think, the strength of your forces. The keep is the strength of your walls, and then at the bottom here is the lumber mill, which is the strength of your gates. If you own them, your gates are stronger didn't own them, so it's always good to attack them and get them first. Oh, so
Oh shit, I've fallen off again. I'm gonna have to stop doing that. Dropping off. See, the, the battles can get quite intense and they're actually really fun because there's a lot of guys attacking, there's quite a few defending. And you see, there's not really a lot of lag going on. So, if anybody's dumb enough to come close, I'm sure it's happened. It's always good to push out if you're ever in a seat situation. A good push is always an idea. If you've enough of you, it's not really enough of you to push out and attack this lot because there are a hell of a lot of these guys around. He's too close. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> See, if you come a little too close, you get destroyed. We need our siege weapons to... Um... See, we are starting to push out a bit here. There we go, siege weapons are starting to hit them badly now. Excellent, that's what we like to see. Shields that you keep putting up and I keep putting up are um, the reduced incoming range damage. You know, used against siege weapons and things like that. Look closer, monkey boy, come on. There we go. Coming in. Although they just got destroyed by some That's mental. Wow, they got annihilated down there. <laughs> I don't know if it was the ultimate that did it, but... Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So we're quite dangerous with uh, the skills that we get for... Whenever they, well, if they take this cape, then they're going to have to repair it. It doesn't automatically repair when they take it, you see. So, it's not going to be a case of, right, we've caught it, bang, all the walls are full again and everything's repaired. It doesn't work like that. You have to physically repair the walls, which I think is pretty good. Because the map's that big, it's going to take a while for the defending or attacking force to get back to it, you see. Now we're pushing out again on that side, let's see how we're doing over here. We okay, saw so I completed one quit, oh there's not a lot left down here. They get pushed as well. Now whenever they die, they're probably going to have to come from here unless they've got, you can get a tent. Which is going to be a spawn point for everybody, so they can put it in a, in a strategic position where we're not going to see it. And they can keep spawning from it nice and uh, easily. Like. 
But we're managing to hold him off. We've got a force that's rolling round. Nice if we can get down there and join him. I don't particularly want to fall off because that hurts. Now you do get a lot of uh, um, stuff for completing your quest and they say this needs to be repaired but I don't think anybody's got any repair stuff. And another thing, I actually don't know where to buy siege weapons, I'm going to have to look into that. I was running around the, the main home area before. Can't see anywhere, but uh, let's see. Now I've no knockback skills on me at the minute, so I'm gonna keep as brave as I can. Just so I don't uh, fall over. But you see, there's, there's different things when I'm sporting one, and I'll show you the skills. Okay, you don't. I mean, you probably can tap target, but I don't think tap target. Can't I might. I might try in a minute. I've got tab as a weapon swap. You see, so I might play with that and just see what tap target's like. But with this many people. It's I like to flake through. Yeah. Oh, that's in fairly long. I have to see what number three does. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Something to do with damage, but I don't know what. Now, obviously, we're pushing these guys back to their camp. So you can have a back and forth situation. Um, I had it uh, during the beta, I think it was. Which is when I did a lot of my PvP, and we were back and forward between two bases for a good couple of hours, just back and forward, back and forward. So there's a lot of go. I mean, it's hard to tell what who's who, which is pretty good. You can't tell if you're a uh, uh, caster or what, because you can change armor. I'm armor with more heavy armor, so I look like a warrior with a, with a shield, which is good. Like, so they don't go me until they can see shit blown up. See, the server's handling it quite well. I'm trying to see where the majority of it is. He wasn't going to last long. So we're getting siege stuff up, so we're starting to hit them fairly hard. Now I'm trying to drop curses on anybody I can see. So much stuff running down on my head. <laughs> but as you see, it can get quite compact. They've all fallen back and set up a defence. 
and then we've just rushed into it. Now, as you see, we can't spawn there. So there must not be a spawn thing, I don't know. But I can spawn down here, which is on its own. Just have a look. And then outposts must not have spawn areas, so if I spawn back here... You can raise people, but you need the soul shorts for that, and not a lot of people are actually gaining them at the minute. And everybody will be using that way shrine there to my right to go back to Bleak Outpost. So there's going to be a big fight there. It looks like there's a bit of a fight there. But I think the majority of it's going to be around this outpost, to be honest. Now, skills wise, as you see down here, Alliance War. You have separate skills for the Alliance War. And uh, separate passive abilities. So all the skill points that you get, you know, are going to be coming in. Which is pretty cool. So there's so many things you can change and mess around with and tinker away. If, if you have weapon swap, which you get at 15, you can have one set for uh, maybe PvE wise. And then if you don't want to use any other type of weapon, say you just want to be staff only, you can then set up another one for PvP so you can just switch around. Or have one for control. So knockbacks, freezes and all that lot, and then swap it for ranged. There's, there's, pl there's plenty of ways you can play this, which I really like actually. It's a, it's a cool way of doing it. You know, there's plenty of ways to, to mess around and change things. Um, now I have mail. It is a reward for handing in the, uh, uh, you know, for completing the 20 enemies one. So I'll take that. Delete the mail. Fingers crossed I've got enough. Where's the consumables bit? Uh, there we go. And got a new robe out of it. Which is worse than the one I've got. So I'll keep the one I've got. But you know, you get cool gear. You do get a lot of stuff, which is really nice. Um to pick up the quests, I shall show you. Greetings. See, there's a transit shrine. So you hit that, see, a lot of people will be going straight back to Bleak as outpost to carry on the combat. But well, I'm going to come up here to the main, uh, the main hall area. Now, as oh, you don't see on there in a minute, but as you see there, the scrolls that you can get. Now, again, I'm not. 200% sure what these scrolls do because I haven't looked into it yet. But uh, they obviously give you some boots. Let's see if we can notice. And it gives you your score. I'm assuming the number one fighter gets to be Emperor. Not 100% on that. And then, like Guild Wars, you know, your score goes up depending on what you hold. Bonuses where you get for the keeps, which is nice because alliance points are used for quite a lot. Oh, there we go. Defensive armor scroll increases armor rating, increases spell resistance and armor. Oh, that's quite nice. And then your emperor bonus, which I don't think anybody has, which is really nice. Increases maximum health by plus five per character level. That's pretty cool. I think that's a bit overpowered, I think they might change that. No, obviously they just, as you see, this one is bunged. But the queues aren't too bad, I must say. Um, they were all locked yesterday. I think it only took me about five minutes to get on. So, ah, that's not too bad. Uh, oh, well, that might be the guy you get siege weapons off. Let's go and see how much they are, shall we? Get me GG out. If you question the value of siege weapons, siege merchant. try to take an enemy keep without them. Ah, they're not too bad. You can buy soul gems as well. Used to capture level 50 or better souls, and that's not too bad. And there's your repairs for your doors and walls and things like that. Which you can buy with gold ore points, which is pretty cool as well. 
trebuchet isn't too bad for what's it? Forward camps are expensive, that's obviously why. Twenty soldiers of your alliance can respawn at. And they only last for a certain amount of time. Yeah. They get used up really quickly, so you probably need a large guild for that, like. And siege repairs. Like ballista. Stone trebuchet, fire trebuchets. Oh, that's quite cool. So you've got different siege weapons, you've got rams, ballistas. I have not a lot of gold left, because I spent a lot of uh, getting my bag space up. <laughs> that ain't cheap. Ice trebuchets. Ice is causing damage and ensnaring targets. Fire. Structures and falls, oh, that's quite cool. Let's buy one of them, shall we? Oops, no, no. So, chuck it in your quick slot, which will be handy. Uh, oh, he's got some cool looking gear on. And I'm assuming the fighting's still going on down there, so we'll go back to that point. Sounds like they've come back, pushed us back here again. Sides now, so uh, got a couple of traps up here. There's a lot coming from that side, so quick slot. Too close for the siege engine. That kind of sucks. So they they do live here, just slamming the walls with them, which is good. I ain't getting any other here. Then you've got your space inside here that you can find problems on. There's plenty of ways of defending, like. Bit of damage and then adds um, an effect to it. 40% chance is quite high, so we'll become slaughtered. Now we are managing to keep it back again. So, I mean, this could go on for ages back and forward, back and forward. And when you get onto a trebuchet or anything like that, it's the same as um, Guild Wars basically, you just get across her 
Ah, and you let me for that point and fire. Same sort of thing. There's a shield up which actually creates a full circle, which is pretty cool. You thought it'd come down and cut off, wouldn't you? When you look underneath me, it's actually going all the way around. I'm actually forcing them back again. On the right, on the uh, west side, anyways, the south side still getting a bit of a pounding. See if they're mine or theirs at the minute. <laughs> but you can stow it away as well, so you can pack it up and take it with you, which is pretty cool. And it has some range on it, like, I have to say. So, X, and we'll stow it away. It's back in my thing. So that's a cool point as well. You can store the weapons away because, you know, they are expensive. You know, a thousand. Uh, and odd points or gold, so it's cool that you can store them away. Obviously, that guy didn't, and he got destroyed. And there was one up there that got destroyed as well. But as you see, now we've pushed them back again in that sort of direction, so we'll probably push them towards the river there. But the fight will go back to there, and it'll be back and forward, back and forward. So that's quite cool. Uh, the combat will last 90 days, and then I don't know what the winner's going to get from that. Um, that's actually under attack there and that's got a scroll on it, so we should be really defending that. But, um, that's cool. So if I go down here and show you... Oh, it's destroyed. That needs to be fixed. Bollocks. So nobody's repaired the way shrine. So we're gonna have to run back. So this will show you how big this place is. Um, so I'm gonna go to this place here. Still can't mount up. destroyed because they were all fucking hidden. So they set them up as basically a trap. Now you see you can't spawn at one that's under attack. It's probably actually been taken by now. So you can get skills that hide everybody and whatnot so you can set up wee ambushes like that. Now Completed the kill everybody on site one. So I need to figure out where the board is. I think it's over here somewhere. And all the arrows pointing me in the oh, there you go. So this is where you collect uh, a lot of the quests. There are starter ones over there. This is the bounty board. So you get a thousand for completing it, a hundred on gold, and it's just. Uh... I commend your success, warrior. And you examine it. Hmm. Let's examine that note while I'm here. She I extend the claw of welcome, warrior. On the mission boards are posted Grand Warlord Zimmerin's orders for the Pact Soldiers. Without them, we are mud crabs, scuttling along without direction. I supervise the bounty and scouting missions. General Jagor directs the others. 
see? So, there's another cool thing about the game. Everything has storage behind it. Now, they must be dailies because you can't pick them up again. So, every story has... Sorry, every quest has storage behind it, which is really cool. And then you can check them. And you think, as you see, I've got loads of caps in different places, but... Some of the places are deep in enemy territory, like down here and there. Now we're getting forced back again here, so the fight's going to go back to Bleaker's outpost, and then we'll probably force them back again and they go back there. So that one's a pretty much back and forward equal fight, which is good. Um, down here, I don't know what's going on, they're still fighting at the gate. But each place is more or less the same. It's the terrain around it that's going to make the most difference. Which is pretty cool. Now I'm hoping at the end of the 90 days they'll swap them over. So, um, say us lot will go over to the left, and then they'll move down to the north, uh, down to the south, and the south will move up there. And that's how I'm hoping it's going to go. Because otherwise, if you're fighting on the same terrain all the time, it's going to be a bit boring and a bit crap. So, if at the end of the 90 days they rotate them, that'd be quite cool. Because obviously there's going to be advantages and disadvantages in different areas of different terrain and stuff like that. So. It would be nice if uh, if they would do that. So guys, there's a look at the PvP. I've probably missed a few things because I've not been in here a hell of a lot lately. Uh, but I'm going to start doing it more and more. Um, you can level in here. As you see, my leveling's gone up a little bit. And I've not really been fighting a hell of a lot. But, um, yeah, if you like PvP, guys, this is definitely a, a cool way of doing it. It's big. It's... Tactics, you know, it's a bit more tactics than uh, any other that I've tried so far, even Guild Wars. Uh, because, you know, if you take the camps, it's handy. You know, you take the camps, it does actually affect what you're doing. Will V World at the minute in Guild Wars 2 needs a bit more of that instead of just the Zerging around. Whoops. Uh, even though this is a bit more Zergy, but as you can see, it's going back and forward, and, you know, there are some tactics coming into it. Uh, so, if you like PvP, guys, this is definitely a cool cool way of doing it. Um, loads and loads of skills you can do and change and mess around with. Uh, and you know if you're in a big guild you can think of some tactics and use them for for the fight. Which is really really cool. So that's thanks for watching. If you like the video give it a thumbs up. I'll do some more uh, Elder Scrolls stuff soon. Um, the intro at the beginning might be a little bit, been a little bit long because I'm playing with a few effects and whatnot, so I'm just messing around uh, to see if I can figure out how to do some cooler stuff. Uh, well, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe. Uh, I'll be chucking some more videos up on other games hopefully soon. Uh, trying to get this channel going as best as I can. Having a full time job is a little bit hard, especially a full time job where you're doing 10 to 13 hours near enough every day. So you know, we'll see um, but again, give a thumbs up subscribe, head over to my Twitch channel uh, I don't stream a lot at the minute but I'm going to try and get that beasted up as well uh, I stream mainly things like uh, maybe Elder Scrolls, Planet Side 2 things like that uh, if you join my Twitch uh, my Twitch, sorry, my Twitter uh, there will be uh, updates going out on there, you'll see where my streams go out you'll see um, just things that I retweet from developers and other games and things like that I'm interested in. And there's also a YouTube channel for my YouTube channel, Derp. Uh, a Facebook page for this channel as well where I add uh, information about what I'm doing, what's going on, information about my rig, videos that I have done I'll post up there as well. Uh, so it's a good place to keep up to date with what's going on on Gavi Gaming TV. Thanks for watching dudes. See you all later.